let's now talk about this week, and that is uh, we have uh, a road course for the first time in a while, uh, unless you want to count the street course. So we've only had two to this point, and those are Sonoma and uh, Coda. So we're going to go through those. Uh, we can also just uh, pop in uh, Chicago along the way. And uh, this is when we get to see uh, Van Gisbergen again, right? He's uh, he's racing again, correct? So, correct. And um, uh, let's see. So let me put this there. <clears throat> so let's take a look at the odds. So let's see. Where are we? Odds. There we go. I know who's first. Uh... Yeah. <laughs> Big surprise, right? This one's not going to be hard either. So there's the three. Actually, pretty pretty, pretty much the same with Kyle, the very short favorite. Keep in mind that uh, 12 of the last 13 winners at Watkins Glen have started in the top three rows, including six straight in the top two rows, even though we've only had one pole sitter during that time. Uh, last pole sitter... Uh, that one uh, before Chase Elliott in 2019 was Kyle Busch in 2008. Uh, but the fact is, you want to start up front. That's not a surprise for a road course. Chevy's won five straight. Ford has not won in the last seven. So complete, completely different scenario than what we had last week. Matter of fact, it was crazy going over the starting lineup last week and seeing no Toyotas in the top 19. I mean, that was crazy. I mean, that's that's just... Yeah. Uh, Usually they have the one lap speed at the super speedways, so that was a little bit different. But just for whatever reason, with their body style, they've not been able to draft well together recently. And Ford's got it nailed down. Chevrolets tend to be more prone to crashing, uh, which is why, you know, on the super speedways, Fords end up having the advantage. Okay, so let's go through. So we got Lars. So here's the three, and as we go through them. I've got my uh, road course stats, uh, career road course stats handy with me. So let's see, Larson, uh, he has uh, five wins, including uh, two in Watkins Glen and uh, over 31 races. This year, he's got a win at Sonoma. So he's coming off the win at Sonoma, 17th at Coda. Uh, Byron, meanwhile, uh, taking a look at uh, Byron, uh, he is uh, coming in with just um, two wins, but still, that's pretty solid for road course driving. One win at Watkins Glen. Uh, he was first at Coda this year, did not perform as well at Sonoma. And Van Gisbergen, uh, he's coming in here uh, with, and again, we, if, as far as uh, the race at Chicago, of course, we know how what happened there. He was the heavy favorite, uh, which was just crazy how heavy of a favorite he was. And, uh, of course, it was a little slick. He finished 40th, but he was also just 20th at Coda. Yeah, I don't believe he was at Sonoma. So, yeah, to me, it's easy. I'm not taking Van Gisbergen so he can get out of there. Um, Byron, I'm not saying he's not capable of winning, but no way am I putting money. We've talked about this plenty of times uh, on a driver that's uh, part-time uh, w- w- with the same odds as these guys. So, I mean, Larson or Byron, who do you like better? Before I answer that, <clears throat> did you notice anything unique about all of the road course races this year as well as all of the road course winners at Watkins Glen that were Chevrolets? Did I notice something about the Chevrolet winners? Yes. Why were they all Hendrick drivers? All of them at Watkins Glen. All the past five, I think, Chevrolet oh, win- Watkins okay. Glen were Hendrick drivers. All three road courses this year, including the Chicago Street Race, are Hendrick Chevrolets. Interesting. Okay, there you go. You've got to have Kyle Larson and William Byron up at the top. And honestly, um, it's tough to choose between the two. Uh, William Byron won here last year. He led 66 laps. Kyle Larson uh, won the two races uh, in the seasons prior, uh, leading 27 and five laps. I'm going to give the slight edge to William Byron just because he led more laps earlier, or or I should say last season, uh, from the front row. Um, I think either one could win. Either one would be a valuable choice, uh, but I would give Byron just a very slight edge over Kyle Larson, and I'm with you. Um, I think uh, favorite odds or co-favorite odds for 
a part-time driver as good as he is. Again, he can win, absolutely. would not be a surprise to me, uh, but this is also a playoff race, and um, too many things can happen to go with Van Gisbergen as a favorite. If he were further down the order, absolutely would be a must-take, uh, but given that, uh, William Byron just gets a slight edge from me this week. All right, let's see here. And now this next group, it's a long one, between 9 and 12. So... Elliot, there's another Hendrick driver. And Reddick. You got AJ. Uh, McDowell's 12 to 1. So is Kyle. So let's uh, let's see about this group. Let's see. Let me go in alphabetical order with these guys. AJ has three wins, including a Watkins Glen win uh, for as far as road courses. He was sixth at both races this year, so that's pretty solid. Uh, also, Christopher Bell, uh, he's got a Roval win. Second at Coda, ninth at Sonoma uh, this year. Kyle, ninth at Coda, 12th at Sonoma this year. He has four road course wins, including two at Watkins Glen. And then we've got Chase Elliott. He has five wins, including two at Watkins Glen. And this year, 16th at Coda, fourth at Sonoma. Ty Gibbs, of course, he's never won. So I think that just puts him out of this group as far as I'm concerned. Uh, he has a third at Coda, a 37th at Sonoma, and it looks like he's only led one lap in his career in 10 road course races. So another reason that I definitely wouldn't uh, pick on myself in this group. Uh, let's see. We still have some more to go here. Let's, uh, let's take a look at uh, McDowell. He's got the win at Indy, and this year he was second at Sonoma. So let's keep that in mind. Did not fare well at Coda. Reddick, he has two wins. Never at Watkins Glen. Two top tens this year, including fifth at Coda. And I think that is it. Uh, I think I went through everybody. So they're on this list right here. So as far as everybody there, who do you like? Who's, uh, who, who, who are you looking at? I like Bell first. Um, he's been at Watkins Glen three different times, finished seventh, eighth, and third, and that eighth place finish came from the 38th starting position. So he's one that can work his way forward. <clears throat> his average at Watkins Glen is a little bit better uh, than Tyler Reddick, who finished 10th, 7th, and 8th in his three races. Um, only led two laps, though, so Bell just a little bit better here at Watkins Glen. Um, Michael McDowell would be interesting. I think he's good from a road course perspective. However, you got to keep in mind that Sonoma, where he's where he had success, where you brought that up, very different from Watkins Glen. And there are times where a certain driver will perform well at Sonoma and not at Watkins Glen or the opposite. And I think uh, Michael McDowell, largely throughout his career, has not performed well at Watkins Glen. His best finish was a sixth, and in fact, that was his only top 10 from 14 career starts. He has led laps, so 14 and 17 laps the last two races that we were there. Uh, but just of the same odds, you got to go with, with a, a Christopher Bell, just a little bit of an edge over a Tyler Reddick. Both of those guys have been racing extremely well on road courses throughout the past couple of seasons in this new generation of car. Um, but again, I'm going to give the edge a little bit more to Christopher Bell just because he's got that little bit of an edge uh, in an average finish at Watkins Glen. Yeah, um, I can definitely see that. And then also, I, I, I just got to include Kyle Busch in there. So, well, yeah, I, he, <laughs> he almost goes without saying at this point, yeah. just because every single week he's racing extremely well. Um, so no reason, you know, not to not to take him. Uh, the only question mark, I mean, he led two laps last year, ended up finishing 14th. He started inside the top 10 in the last one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, seven of the last eight Watkins Glen starts. So assuming they can get their strategy right and he doesn't make any mistakes, no reason why he shouldn't be in store for another top 10 or a potential win again this weekend. Okay. Let's move down to the next groups here. Let's see. Let's go here I guess we can go here let's talk about let's see well forget your ex I mean who the heck what is Juan Pablo Montoya <laughs> doing on this list I forgot that Montoya was coming back <laughs> I mean really 22 to 1 we haven't seen him in a NASCAR car in what 5 years I'm not sure he's been in any in any car for quite some time, so certainly not with any regularity. All right, <clears throat> it's gonna be tough for him. 
let's see if any of these drivers uh, and again this is when you get a little bit of a break on the odds so let's see uh, well yeah I, I mean I, let's go to Hamlin so Hamlin uh, not good this year in his two road course races but his only win on a road course is Watkins Glen. So he does have that, and he is 22-1. to 1. Uh, Let's see Suarez coming off a really good uh, uh, result. Unfortunately, even though he has a Sonoma win, not good so far on the road courses this year. But he does have a little momentum, so maybe that is something to keep an eye on. Uh, yeah, Chastain is like Truex at this point. Why would you bet a, a, any of those guys? They're just not not going well. Sindrick does not have good results this year, but he's got the Indy win, and he knows he's good on road courses. And you're getting thirty five to one. So I, you know what? I've, out of this whole group, I think I'm going to look at both Suarez and Sindrick. Yeah, I. I don't think I disagree with you. Um, I think Sindrick certainly at the best value of everybody that's been on that list, just because we know he's spectacular at the road courses, hasn't been able to necessarily prove it at Watkins Glen, nope. uh, 13th and 16th. There is only two finishes here, but he, you know, he qualified eighth and 17th and finished inside the top 20, aiming at top 15s there. So that's pretty good for for Sindrick. Um, and you'd expect that at a road, at a road course uh, so therefore, I think he's the best value. Suarez a little bit, you know, hit or miss for me. So he's got some top fives, three top fives at Watkins Glen, but his other three finishes were all outside the top 15. And he's only led uh, at Watkins Glen once. And that was the time that he finished third, his first race at the track in 2017 series. I might consider Denny Hamlin, though. The odds aren't bad. And yeah, he's been struggling on the road courses this year. But if you look at last year, he started on pole, finished second. He only led three laps. But prior to that, at Watkins Glen, um, if you throw 2022 out, uh, in 2018, 19, and 21, he f started first, sixth, and sixth, and finished 13th, third, and fifth. So Hamlin is there. He just hasn't had the edge to be able to get up to the front at Watkins Glen to lead laps and win the race. Uh, so out of that group, I think Sindrick is probably the best bet, best bargain for sure, uh, but I wouldn't discount Hamlin either. All right, let's now go down the list here. Let's see. Then we get to some other long shots. Um, only a few more that are really worth it. That's Bowman, Logano, and Blaney. But Logano's got his win back to back. Probably not going to happen as far as Bowman is concerned. And Blaney. So Bowman, uh, he has a couple of runner ups. And, and we have seen, uh, based on those runner ups in six top fives and over his career, that he can pop up and look at what he did in Chicago. Uh, he was also fourth at Coda, and he's coming off a solid pl uh, play, and he's 35-1. to 1. So Bowman is definitely a solid long shot choice. Blaney, meanwhile, and it's really amazing that Blaney, he came that close to having his car really fucked up. And they were able to patch it up nicely, and because it was a super speedway, that really worked to his advantage as well. Um uh, you know, the only other possible way that he'd have a shot if his car is like that is probably a, a short track. But fact is, uh, they still were one of the best cars on Sunday. Gets his momentum back once the playoffs begin. Seventh at Sonoma, twelfth at Coda. He's got the Roval win, uh, which is one of five career top fives. And actually has a 50% rate as far as top tens over his 28 race road course career. So... Um, I would definitely be looking at Bowman and Blaney as good long shots. I like where their numbers are, and uh, let's start with uh, let's we'll start with that with those before we get to the hundred to ones, and that includes Chase Briscoe. Unfortunately, Chase has never had a top five in seventeen road course events. Yeah, certainly of that bunch, uh, I'm going to throw Joey Logano out because he's been up and down all season. He was very up last week. He's driving a Ford, which just has not performed on road courses. Uh, if I'm going to take a Ford, though, it's going to be Ryan Blaney, and it's going to be at Watkins Glen. Um, I think Blaney's got some pretty good statistics here. Uh, one, two, three, four finishes out of seven that were 12th or better. He started 23rd here last year and finished ninth. Uh, doesn't get out front and lead a lot of laps, probably because he's in a Ford and he's not the greatest road course racer, uh, but that would be my choice out of the bunch. I wouldn't shy away from Logano from a fantasy perspective because 
you know, it's all about peaking at the right time. And I think this his team has shown speed throughout the season. So it wouldn't surprise me if he's got speed here at Watkins Glen. He's got some good finishes, third and tenth in his last two starts at the track. Just that up and down every other week for me uh, has been tough. And obviously going back to back uh, with wins is really, really difficult in this series. So I don't know necessarily necessarily that Logano is going to be your bet to win. Alex Bowman, if this were any other road course, I'd probably take him. But at Watkins Glen, I agree with you. I think he's worth considering and might be a good long shot. Uh, but at Watkins Glen, he's going to have to pull, pull one of those surprises out of his hat, like he typically does. You're right. Just because his, his best finish here is 14th, which he did three times. He was 23rd last week. Yeah, uh, I agree. That's uh, that's the one thing that's definitely uh, not in his way. But what's good is that he's driving a Hendrick. Exactly right. That's so, why you've got to consider him. Have him in your fantasy rosters for sure. Definitely take Alex Bowman in fantasy rosters this week. Okay, and the other t- uh, two, as far as these really super long shots you see here, uh, just to note, uh, you got Eric Jones, who does have uh, nine top tens and three top fives and 26 road course uh, races. No top 15s this year, just three career laps led as well. Kozlowski, meanwhile, no top tens this year on the two road courses. Never won a race on a road course. That's 40 career races, six top fives. So he's been okay. But he was, uh, he's, I think that was, again, I'm not, I haven't looked at him lately, but I think most of that was a while ago. So, uh, yeah, out of this group, I, I just, I, I don't really tell you the truth, see anything that's worth it, even, even all the way down the line here, unless you, 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 you tag someone in particular for some reason. If you're really looking in that group, I'd probably go with Eric Jones. Um, he's been consistently decent at Watkins Glen. Uh, six career starts, four of them have been top tens, two of them have been top fives. He was 10th in 2022, only finished 29th last year, qualified 31st in both of those. Um, but yeah, I, Eric Jones, if you're really trying to go that far down, probably would be about as far as I would go. Okay, so as far as picks, and don't forget to check out our starting lineup show. And uh, look, I, they've done the worst possible thing the last two weeks. They've started our, our the uh, uh, qualifying. They've ended qualifying right when college football's twelve o'clock games end. So, which my post game show was at right after the twelve o'clock games. This week, no such issues. There is no post game show, so I'll be good to go whenever the the uh, starting lineup uh, is ready to. Uh, uh, come out after qualifying a practice on Saturday. So we'll be, we'll, and, and it's going to be very important. So you want to check that out after what we said at the open uh, with 12 of the last 13 in the top three rows and six straight in the top two rows. Okay. So who do you have? Give me your top three picks. Uh, top pick is William Byron. Uh, my middle, um, I'll go with Hendrick. And then my long shot, I'll go with Blaney. Yeah, I like that. I think I might just say okay. <laughs> that works for me. Take take Bell. He, he, if I got a fourth, I would put Bell in there. You know, uh, since I would have taken, I tell you what, since I would have taken Byron, and I don't have a favorite, I'm going to take Bell and Bush. So this way, I, I, I'll, I'll take two in that area, and then I will go ahead and take Bowman. Excellent. All right. So there you go. Byron, Cedric Blaney, Bell, Bush, and Bowman. All right. Now, let's take a look. We're going to switch on over. What's next week, by the way? Uh, for NASCAR is Bristol. Yeah. Bristol, excellent. Yes. Very, very good. Okay. Who won early this year? Uh, let's see. Bristol. Hamlin. Hamlin. Yes, he Looks was like he a, dominated. A short track swing. Yes, he was winning at all the short tracks at that point. Okay. So he's that's uh, that's coming at the right time for Denny Hamlin. Just like it's coming at the right time for Kyle Larson this week. Keeping in mind, Kyle Larson, this is, the, again, the funny thing about Kyle Larson is that he's won once since Sonoma. So he's got four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven. He's got one win in his last eleven races. 
It feels weird, doesn't it? You would think that he's had like six wins this year. <clears throat> yeah. Um, very inconsistent, but winning frequently, I guess. And that's what we might get this week. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. And that's what it takes. I mean, he's got the four, four wins leads the series. I mean, it's not a lot, but in a series where, you know, the playoff structure is, is just about winning, um, he's in contention every week. 